Hey guys and welcome to the Domain Hunter Gatherer video guide series. In this video I'll be showing you what to do once you have already scraped a bunch of aged Web 2.0 accounts. I will be demonstrating how to register them so you have full control over them and also what to expect when going to register them. Here we have our list of Web 2.0s that are available. This was a short search that I've just run to get a bit of a cross section of different websites and what I would usually do to register them. So here is the list of accounts. To go to the website, specifically the account on the website, you can simply click on it. Usually this will take you to some sort of error page. Do not be disturbed by this, it is normal and is actually what you want to see as it shows that the account is not currently in use and hopefully should be available to register. From here, what we want to find is the register link for this site. Usually, the easy route for this will be from the home page, or if you're lucky, will actually be on the, the error page itself. So as we can see here, there is a, an easy to find sign up link. So I'm gonna click on that. Okay, now the, the home page or the name of the account will always be the subdomain of the account. So just enter that into the input here. Now you can easily get the, the subdomain by right clicking and you copy the selected domain from within Domain Hunter Gatherer. And then we can go onto the website and get rid of the, the domain. So there we have just the subdomain which is future of tech in this example. You see the subdomain is what is at the beginning of the domain, the first bit before the first period point there. So future of tech and as we can see here, Newsvine is telling us that that is available. So there we go, that one is available. So then when you've done that, you've checked that the account is available, what you would then want to do is fill in the rest of the account, entering in your address, your password, oh sorry, your email address, your password, and uh, display name, and obviously entering in any capture that they're asking for, and then register for that account. And from that point on, that account is yours and you can do with it what you want. You can put on whatever content that you want, including links to your websites or to your, com um, or to your customers' websites. Okay. From this point, what you will want to do is go back into Domain Hunter Gatherer, look for more accounts and continue on the process. Now I'm gonna try another one. Now we see this is a uh, giving us a, a 404 error message, which as I said before, an error message is not necessarily a bad thing and actually will normally go to show that we have um, an account that is not in use. So what I'm gonna do is rather than go into Domain Hunter Gatherer, I'm just gonna get the, um, the account name from the address here. And as you can see, it's already in the address bar. And that's the same as what it is in the, the domain list there within DHG. So as I said before, to find the register link, often you'll want to go to the home page. So I'm just going to get rid of the subdomain and then you have the website address there. And from here, we see there is a pricing, sign up, login, uh, create free site link. These are the ones that you want to be looking for, the create a free site or sign up link. They're the ones which will allow you to register for your account. Now on all of the sites that are included in Domain Hunter Gatherer, you can ignore anything mentioning pricing or costs or anything like that. All of them allow you to sign up for and use the sites for free for publishing your content. It's just that they tend to offer um, paid accounts which will uh, normally be promoted by them or have some extra features, but generally they're not necessary and the, the free accounts are just as good to use as the paid accounts so you can ignore the fact that it says price in there so I'm going to go through and register this just to check that that account is actually available now see this has the the site URL as the first option here so again we're going to fill that in as I copied and pasted it earlier I'm going to put that in and yep we've got the tick here so that account is available and then as with Newsvine that we did a minute ago what you're going to going to then want to do is fill in the username, password, email address and whatever capture they have and click the, the register button. And again from that point on that account is then yours. You can put on whatever content you want with links to your sites or your customers sites and basically do whatever it is that you want with it because that is then yours. 
Now some people have been getting in touch with me asking why certain accounts are shown as being available when they aren't actually available um, for registration. Now there are a couple of reasons for this. The specific reason depends on which website you're actually talking about. Now Tumblr for example hides the availability check behind an account login. Now it would be possible to add in an actual check for this but it would add an extra requirement to users as well as the software in the form of having to enter in multiple accounts. It would force users to use good quality private proxies and it would also slow down the process and introduce a potential virus threat. Now what a lot of users maybe don't realize is that every effort to keep my software 100% safe from any sort of virus threat or unwanted software is made at the start of making any of my software and I will never use built-in web browsers as they run code and can be a target for viruses and other unwanted software to be installed. Now, Domain Hunter Gatherer and all of my other software actually do not work like this. No code or media is ever run from any website and as such there is zero chance of ever getting a virus from this or any of my other software. Now if I added a, a Tumblr 100% accurate availability check-in, I could not guarantee the safety while using the software and that is not a compromise that I, um, I will be willing to make. Okay, so I'm gonna, despite that, some people get in touch and say no tumblers are um, showing as available. Now, I've just run a, a check on this account here and it's actually available. What I'm going to quickly do is check another one. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to open up Tumblr. As you can see the account here is not being used. So I'm going to take the, the subdomain here and then I'm going to go to the home page which I mean, you, you could type it in manually or you could click on the link here. Now I'm actually logged into my account. As I said, there's no publicly available way of checking availability, but you can register for a free account and then you can add as many um, blogs to that account. So now I'm logged into to my account. What you need to do is find the, the profile or account icon here, click on that. And then down here where it says blogs, there's a plus new thing here. Uh, that's the the little thing you want to be looking for click on that and then again we have the same URL account um, name input here so you want to put in the account and I've found another one that does actually work so you know that out of the the couple that I've actually checked on this run they have actually been available so as you can see even though the accuracy is not a hundred percent it's certainly by no means all of them are not available. Maybe this one won't be. Um, ah. Is that? Yeah, that's available as well. So I'll show you one that won't be available. Google. There. When you enter in uh, an account that isn't available, it will say another person has claimed this URL. So even though I haven't actually been able to find one easily that isn't available to show you why people are getting in touch, as you can see, all the ones that I've had actually are available. So that goes against what I was just saying, but still, the accuracy on tumblers is actually surprisingly high. It's in the high 90%. So if you do get some that aren't available, they are actually the, um, the outliers here. Now, another site that has accounts show up as available when they cannot always be registered is Blogspot. Now, the reason for this is very different to Tumblr as these accounts are actually in the process of becoming available. And um, if you check back regularly, you will see them. Now. Blogspot accounts are probably the hardest ones to find. Um, so as you can see here, this is an example of one that was found. And as you can see, the blog has been removed and it says, sorry, the blog at such and such dot .com has been removed. This address is not available for new blogs. And here we have another one not available. Now, it is very hard to find a Blogspot account that is available when it's available. Now, this is mainly because they are very sought after, but what you will find is that you get, not lots, but you'll get um, a few instances where you will have a Blogger account or a Blogspot account 
that has been removed. Now at some point between now and 60 days, it normally be much less than that, this account will become available. So at the end of that time period you will be able to get that. That's why these are showing up in the list because they aren't available now but they will be available soon. So if you find one that you are very interested in, keep an eye out, just check back every day or so and you'll be able to get it. It's really that simple. Um, as with Tumblr, there isn't any 100% uh, way of checking without implementing a web browser and relying on the user to enter in lots of accounts, lots of proxies and things like that um, and entering in the potential virus threat, which I'm not gonna do. All the other sites, should be um, should be fine. Virtually all of them will have a hundred percent or very near to hundred percent accuracy rate. So if you're really concerned with not wasting your time, um, potentially finding the odd tumbler that isn't available, although I wouldn't advise disabling it, you can do. And the same goes for Blogspot. Um, if you don't want to spend the time searching and checking the Tumblr and Blogspot blogs, you can just uncheck them and it will save that automatically as soon as you check them and it won't set, uh, won't search for Tumblr or Blogspot blogs. It's that simple. Personally, I prefer to um, have all of them and check them. So there's that. Um, so there it is. Registering, registering an account on these websites really isn't rocket science. It shouldn't take more than a minute or two um, for each account once you get comfortable with what you were doing. Um, now before we go, I want to show Overblog because I understand that most users are American or at least speak English and perhaps they don't speak French. If you're looking to create an account here, um, I'm going to take the subdomain you'll see that you've got a 404 page which is a, an account or a page not uh, not found. If you don't read French it's this Créer mon blog. You want to click on that and then this is the, the input for checking the account. Um, oh that's it, you need to actually submit this form before it will tell you if it's available. So in the address email thing you just stick in a uh, actually I don't want to actually register it in case somebody else wants this blog maybe they do I'm gonna put in a, and I'm not gonna tick the I'm a robot because all I'm doing is checking the account and as you can see it's available so that's what you do for overblog if you are um, linguistically challenged in that you don't speak French it's that bright orange link there and then it's the subdomain email address and password I mean the email address password and it's all fairly um, obvious but just in case it's not there it is so the other sites should all be in English and will they all um, act largely in the same way if you're looking for the um, registration link if it's not on the the 404 error page it will be from the home page so just go to the home page find the registration link and fill in the form from there um, as you can see a great thing with these blogs is that a lot of them will be indexed in Google and or Yahoo so any of those if you want to start putting content on there and ranking or sending links to your own site straight away you don't need to worry about whether or not they're um, going to be indexed in the search engines because the vast majority of them already are. Now most of them won't have page ranks because obviously page rank hasn't been updated since 2013 and we're now in 2015 and it looks like it's not going to be updated again. So I wouldn't worry about that too much because all of these sites like Blogspot for instance, um, you don't, you're don't, you not going to get much higher authority than that and you're getting your own subdomain on those websites. So even though, yeah, it's great if you find one with a, a high PR, but ultimately I wouldn't worry about that. I'd just find one that either has your um, keywords in the, the domains or find one with some social shares or you know some trust flow or a high page authority something like that either way you know what to do with them so there we go the web 2.0 hunter is included as part of the premium version of domain hunter gatherer that is currently available for just 10 pounds a month with this you have unlimited use and no restrictions whatsoever. On top of this there is a rolling 30 day money back guarantee so for any time you decide that you don't want to 
um, have access to great free accounts on massively authoritative sites, just let me know and you will receive your last payment back in full. With your premium version, you also get unlimited access to the Domain Auction Hunter with no adverts, no limitations and no restrictions. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding this video or anything else to do with the software, you can post them in the comments section, create a support ticket in the members area or email me at support at domainhuntergatherer.com. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.